Thank you for enrolling this course to Intro to Totally Integrated Automation Systems. I hope you will enjoy it and get something worthwhile from it. My name is Omar Tantawi and I'm your instructor. While you can certainly watch these videos in any order, I do recommend starting at the first course and moving through one at a time because the lectures do build on each other. As you go through the course, please feel free to participate and ask questions. Your inputs are more than welcome. Learning to program can be a challenging experience in the beginning. My goal is to help you get through the bumps and bruises so that you can get start PLC programming in no time. I truly believe everyone can learn to program. Just remember that everyone was a beginner at some point and the goal should be to keep trying. This course is packed with exercises and activities that challenge you and help you grow as a PLC programmer. I hope this course is a five-star experience for you. All right, see you soon in the course. When we program a PLC, we use a lot of different blocks and instructions. There's the main block editor where we write our logic logic program. For Siemens PLCs, it's called organizational block OB1. There is also a hardware configuration interface builder to work on the individual components of the PLC, such as the CPU, input and output modules. The program will contain input instructions as shown, which represents and controlled by feedback input devices such as sensors. Output instructions represent and control motion drives or outputs such as solenoids, lights, and contactors. Now to program a PLC and monitor its program, we need to understand the closed loop control system and the machine sequential process. Starting with the basics, a discrete type. So now, let's get started. Nowadays, industrial machines are a mechatronics closed-loop control system that consists of systems such as electrical system, fluid system, mechanical system, and lastly, the system controller, such as a relay controller, it uses devices that are electrically connected to control the system, or a PLC controller, it uses a unit device to control the system. System controller organize these systems to work together. These systems consist of components or devices such as the actuator. Actuator is one that actuates and is used for moving or controlling the motion of something. So it's an energy conversion device. It's a device that does a mechanical work on something. The work motion and how fast the work is done it's controlled by the actuator and or the mechanical interface. Now, the actuator motion and speed is controlled by the motion drive. Work is an energy. Motion drive supplies the actuator with this source of energy only when needed. In most systems, this source of energy is either electric or fluid power. The actuator takes this source of energy from the motion drive and converts it into mechanical energy. This energy is used to move the load or run the system. Now the motion drive is controlled by a system controller like a PLC. It sends a control signal to the motion drive when it receives a feedback input signal or signals from the system. Feedback input devices such as speed sensors, 
position, orientation sensors, presence of object sensors, they sense a physical input like position, presence of a part or workpiece, shaft speed, thickness, material type, liquid level, and convert it into electrical signal, which being used by the system controller for sequencing. The feedback input devices can be located anywhere on the system. According to their operation, some are placed on the body of the actuator, such as a position sensors. Some are placed on the actuator shaft, like speed sensors. Some are placed on the mechanical interface or the system, such as positioning sensors, orientation, part present sensors, height measurement, and many more. Let's look at the system again. The upper side of the closed loop control system is the power side, and the bottom side is the control side. Loads can be categorized according to their type of work motion. The first type is a rotary type fixed position. Example of a load is the pump. To run the pump, its shaft must rotate in a certain direction, like clockwise, at a certain speed like 500 RPM. And when it rotates, the propellers or gears attached will rotate, carrying the liquid from the inlet port and pump it to the outlet port. In order for the pump shaft to rotate, the shaft must be connected to the actuator so work can be done on the pump. The type of the actuator in this case is a rotary type such as the electric motor. The motor shaft must mechanically be linked or connected to the pump shaft by using a mechanical drive. In most applications, the motor shaft rotates at a higher speed with less amount of torque than what the load requires. In this case, one of the three mechanical drives must be used as a linkage, such as gear drive, chain drive, or belt drive, to match the motor speed and torque with the pump rated speed and torque. Matching means decreasing the motor speed and increasing its torque by using different sizes of gears or sprockets or pulleys. A mechanical clutch is used as a protection device in case of an overload and can be placed on either side, the pump shaft or the motor shaft, commonly on the high speed shaft. The device shown is called a slip clutch and there is two methods of, or operations for the clutch, engagement and disengagement. A mechanical brake is used for safety as a separate device or a built-in mechanism to lock the pump in position from reversing. Switching the pump on off is done by switching the motor on or off, which is done by a motion drive called a direction control drive or contactor. Switching the motor is controlled electrically using a coil attached on the contactor as one device built in. When the contactor coil receives a signal from the system controller, the contactor contact closes and supplies the motor with energy. If the control signal is disconnected, the contacts open mechanically by a spring disconnecting the motor from the source. Now adjusting or changing the pump speed below its rated speed changing the flow rate, the amount of liquid being pumped. This can be controlled electrically by using a variable speed drive, or VSD, which is another type of motion drive, such as a pulse width modulator, PWM. Instead of doing it mechanically by changing the gear or pulley or sprocket sizes every time we want to change the flow rate, a variable speed drive changes the speed by changing the amount of energy supplying the motor. Decreasing the energy causes a decrease in the motor speed, 
which will cause a decrease in the pump speed. A variable speed drive changing the amount of energy only when it receives a control signal, like a speed request signal, from the system controller. Otherwise, the speed is maintained at a certain set point. There are two types of variable speed drives commonly used in industry. A pulse width modulation, PWM, to control a DC motors, and a variable frequency drive, VFD, to control an AC motors. Motion drives can have one of the two, direction control drive or variable speed drive connected to the actuator, or can have both depending on the application. These two here are called the actuator motion, just right after the actuator block and before the mechanical block. Rotary actuator motion is clockwise or counterclockwise. Linear actuator motion is extend or retract. Now, if we want only to switch the motor on off, which will run it in one direction, then only one direction control drive or contactor is used. If we want to switch the motor on or off in both directions, clockwise or counterclockwise, then two direction control drives are used. If you want to change the motor speed, only a variable speed drive is used. And finally, if we want to turn the motor in either direction and change its speed, two direct control drives and one variable speed drive is used. And the system controller will have to have three control signals going to the motion drive's block. The same for the cylinder. If you want only to extend the cylinder, then only one single solenoid direction control valve or DCV is used. If you want to extend and retract the cylinder, then a double solenoid DCV or direction control valve is used. If you want to change the stroke speed of extension, a flow control valve or FCV is used. If you want to change the stroke speed of extension and retraction, two flow control valves or FCVs are used. And finally, if we want to turn the cylinder in either direction and change its speed, then two flow control valves or FCVs and a double solenoid DCV is used. The system controller will have to have only two control signals going to the DCV solenoid's motion drive. Because all the FCVs you will be dealing in this course are not electrically controlled or operated. Outcomes Actuator is an energy conversion device. It is a device that does a mechanical work on something. Motion drives types are direction control and speed control drives. The actuator motion is controlled by a direction control drive and motion speed is controlled by a speed control drive. The preferred method of controlling the load work motion and speed is electrically with motion drives but it can be controlled mechanically with mechanical drives. The feedback sensors or switches are specified according to their operation and their signal types are discrete voltage type and analog like 0 to 10 volt or 4 to 20 milliamp or resistive type. These are analog types. The two common types of system controllers are a hardwired relay and a PLC. The electrical or fluid energy flow to the actuator is controlled by the motion drive. The actuator is supplied, the, is supplied with energy from the motion drive and not from the PLC. Closed loop control system is a system that are organized to work together by a system controller based on feedback input signal or signals. The energy in a closed loop control system flow in different forms 
in the power side of the control system. As we said before, to program PLC and monitor its program, we need to understand the closed loop control system and the machine sequential process. Now let us have a look at the feeding and stamping machine. As shown, the machine is now in home or start position. The very first thing to look for is the type and the number of actuators. These three are called cylinders. A cylinder is an actuator that does a work motion on the load. The load here is the workpiece that is inside the magazine. The three cylinders are a pneumatic cylinder linear type, labeled as actuator 1, actuator 2, actuator 3. Their work motions are feed, stamp, and stop. Recall that linear cylinders have extend and retract motion to do the work. The fourth actuator is an electric motor rotary type, labeled as M1 or motor 1. Its work motion is convert forward. Recall that motors have clockwise or counterclockwise to do the work. The second thing to look for and specify are the feedback sensors. These two are position sensors. They sense the position of cylinder 1A when it's fully extended or fully retracted labeled as 1B1 and 1B2. The letter B is for sensors and the number on the right is the sensor number. The number on the left is the actuator number. There are a total of six position sensors, a pair on each cylinder. These two are field sensors. They sense the presence of the workpiece or object labeled as B1 or B2. Now let us look at the machine sequence to verify that each of the actuator will do a work motion on the workpiece. So after seeing the machine sequence, understanding the sequential process is now much easier. If we want to give a name that describes each step, then the sequential process is feeding, conveying, stamping, releasing, packaging, and finally home position. Now to see if you understand the closed loop control system, we need to draw one for this machine. Instead of having one loop, here we have four actuators, four loops. First step, start drawing the actuator blocks. There is a total of four, three cylinders, and one motor. Draw them according to the sequential process. The first one is actuator 1A feed. The second is model 1 conveyor. The third is actuator 2A stamp. The fourth is actuator 3A stop. We know that every actuator must be connected to its own motion drive. So second step, drawing the motion drives blocks. There's a total of four blocks. The first one, it must have a directional control valve or DCV, since the feed cylinder extends and retracts, labeled as 1V1. It also have two flow control valves or FCVs attached on the cylinder ports, labeled as 1V2 and 1V3. 
The second block it must have a direction control drive and only one direction control drive since the motor turns in one direction when it's switched on. This direction control drive is labeled as K3. There's no any speed control drive is shown. The third and the fourth must each have a direction control valve since both cylinders extend and retract, labeled as 2V1 and 3V1 respectively. Also, each have two flow control valves attached on the cylinder ports labeled as 2V2 and 2V3, 3V2 and 3V3 respectively. Third step, drawing the mechanical interface blocks and the material flow. For actuator 1, there is a feed head, the piece that is attached on the threaded rod of the cylinder. No brake or clutch is shown or needed, and that's one of the biggest advantages of using fluid power system. The feed cylinder will push the workpiece to an intermediate position a hollow block with dashed border. Third step for motor M1 is the belt drive. No brake or clutch is shown and is not needed since it's a conveyor and runs only in one direction. The motor will move the workpiece to the second intermediate position for stamping. Actuator 3 have the stamp head. Again, it's the piece that is attached on the threaded rod. The cylinder will stamp the work material, holding it in position. Actuator 4 have the gate or stop head. The cylinder will release the work material from its current position to its final position for packaging. Fourth step is specifying and drawing the feedback blocks. There are a total of six position sensors located on the three cylinders. Two part present sensors located in the field. The fifth step is the controller I.O. terminal block. A total of eight feedback signals are connected to the controller as an inputs. Six control signals as an outputs from the control to the motion drives. A control signal for each solenoid or coil. Finally, it's worth to mention that all the fluid inputs power needs to be connected together one manifold and supplied by one source. Going more in detail about the PLC IO terminal block, the inputs are on the right side connected to the modules number 0 and 1. The outputs are on the left side connected to module number 4. Each input and output has an address that contains the module number and the pin number. Position sensors have two wires. One is connected to an input module pin, in this case the blue wire, and the other is connected to a voltage source, the brown wire. The field sensors, like part prison sensor, have three wires the black wire is connected to the input module pin. The outputs are the motion drives. For the feeding and stamping machine, the motion drives that are electrically controlled are all direction control type. Three direction control valves and one direction control drive or contactor. As we said before, inside the contactor there is only one coil. 
when the coil receives a control signal, it closes the contact and runs the motor in only one direction. The coil inside the direction control valve or DCV is called a solenoid. The DCV can have one or two solenoids, one on each side, one to extend and one to retract. A single solenoid DCV has only two wires. One is connected to the output module pin and the other to a zero volt or ground. There is two single solenoids DCVs and one double solenoid DCV with four wires, two wires for each solenoid. This solenoid is labeled as 1M1. The number on the left is the actuator number. The one on the right side is the solenoid number and the letter M is the solenoid abbreviation in Germany. 